All right, guys, we're back here with Josh in Yakima, Washington. How's it going, Josh? Doing good, living life. How's your day been? Uh, it's been all right, doing a lot of walking, 35 miles yesterday. and from then where? Put, uh, from the end of Terrace Heights all the way back to Yakima, and then from Yakima to Union Gap and back to Yakima. Wow. And why is it that you walk that much? Uh, my homegirl needed a ride home. She was driving, she was about to drive drunk, so I gave her a ride home and then walked from her pad. And I went to go check up on my other homegirl last night oh, wow. and then walked back over here. Hey, bro, so uh, you're currently going through the struggle being out here in the streets, right? Yeah. We were talking about it before the video. And you also mentioned that you got stabbed not too long ago. Yeah. What happened? Uh, I was walking down this alleyway, and this guy asked me for a cigarette. And I tried to give him half my cigarette because that's all that was left. And he was like, man, you could just tell me that you don't want to give me a cigarette. And I was like, do you want the cigarette or not? He's like, let me check your pocket, see if you got any cigarettes. And then we ended up getting into an altercation and I got poked up and then had to walk six blocks to the hospital. And yeah, wow. had my gallbladder removed, almost had my liver transplanted. All over a cigarette. Cigarette, yep. Wow, bro. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Dude. That was my second time getting stabbed. Really? What happened the first time? Uh, I was in front of the mission on first street in yakima yeah. and uh these two guys attacked me trying to rob me and i got my wrist slit right here and uh yeah passed out a dude on blood loss in my car and then crashed into a fence and then got woke up in the hospital wow see one of my questions bro is what, what kind of struggles do you go through being out here you know in the streets and you pretty much just answered a whole lot, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, it all just depends on who you surround yourself with. You have the good and the bad, just like in every situation, you can look at it either way. For sure. But in the streets, it's a little different because you have to demand respect a little bit higher than you do in regular person life, or else you're going to get walked over and picked on. And I tend to take care of me and my peoples the best that I can. That's good, bro. I, everyone bleeds like I bleed, so why be scared of another man? For sure, bro. How do you do it to stay motivated and positive? Because from the moment that I pulled up, you, you had like this this positive energy, you know? Yeah, well, my, my mom is my fucking hero. She's like, she was born in 1955. She got scleroderma and stuff and C fibromyalgia, COPD. But uh, she, she just lives life like there's no tomorrow. She lives life like she's 21 every single day. And so I just, you know, I wake up and I choose to be happy rather than just mope my head and drag and drag my feet and cry about it. That's rather good, just bro. smile and change vibes. That's good, bro. Um, where did you sleep last night? Uh, in a, a half burnt down abandoned house. By Over yourself in or Gap. with a group of people? Nah, by myself. Wow. I, I, I would imagine, bro, like sleeping in there is probably not good for your health. Oh, uh, no, not at cleaner. all. Not at all. But I mean... Yeah, it is what it, it is, it's man. Better than being completely yeah. out. Right? Uh, it's just because you're hidden, man. Because people will come jack your stuff in the middle of the night while you're trying to sleep or jump you and rob you. And I already have my fair share of that. So, How was your childhood, bro? Uh, foster kid. Never stayed in place for very long. Moved around constantly. Uh, never met my biological parents until I was 18. And then uh, started doing drugs at 11 years old. What kind uh, of drugs? My first drug was cocaine. My aunt sat me down and was like, your uncle just died and we did an eight ball of cocaine. And then I did dope or meth at 13 for the first time and been smoking weed since 11. And yeah, pretty much every, uh, peyote, mushrooms, acid. Yeah, pretty much everything. Everything you can do, I've tried. What, what, which drug do you feel like currently you're, you're doing the most? Meth. Meth, meth. meth is the hardest drug that I've, <coughs> had to break apart from. I had a little brother who passed away due to the opioids, the blues, the fentanyl pills. Yeah. And he, he passed away two years ago and that that kept me from doing opioids. Like I, I liked wow. them way too much so I couldn't, I just started selling them instead of doing them. Are you currently selling them right now? Uh, some, a little bit here and there. Yeah. Um, and I'm gonna ask you a couple questions, bro. Whatever you feel like you don't wanna answer yeah. is completely understandable, you know? Um. Out of the people that you sell to, how many would you say are homeless and how many would you say uh, are not? Me, me personally, I have these set of rules that make me make it so I can sleep at night. I won't sell to anyone that's under 25. I won't sell to anyone that's not already homeless. I won't sell to anybody that's not sick. Like, oh, okay. 
So that that just helps me sleep at night, you know, knowing that sure. they're gonna get it somewhere. So I might as well get the money. For sure, bro. Um, you also mentioned, bro, before the video that you actually have a sibling. Yeah. That's out here in the struggle as well. Yeah. How old are you and how old are they? I'm 21. He's 23. Uh, he's more he's more into the just hardcore drugs, to getting high all the time and and not really doing much with his life. For me, my upbringing was a lot of gang activity and uh, fighting and violence was more part of my life than drugs were, uh -huh. even though I was doing drugs at the same time. Like, he just chose the drug route and I chose the violent route. And then my little brother, who was really cool. Uh, the one that he, passed away. Yeah, his name was Jamie. And uh, he, he didn't even really do drugs that much. He just started on, on opioids. And within a month, he just OD'd. Crazy man. Were your biological parents? I know that you said that you went into foster care. How old were you when you did go into foster care? Uh, from right out the gate. Uh, my biological father was arrested after I was only a couple weeks old and spent 18 years in prison. And then my biological mother gave me up as she fled the state uh, for child trafficking charges. So, and I was given up right away. My older brother, they took him though. They brought him along for the trip for a little bit, and then he got put into foster care when he was 12. But, I mean, we all have a life. We all live. We all make mistakes. We all get, I can't, I can't hold them accountable to what they did back then. I'm a grown man now, so I make my own choices. For sure, bro. Um, do you have any kids? No, I do not, but I take care of one as my own. It's my brother's. Uh, oh, one really? kid. Yep. The one that passed away? No, my older brother. My my older brother. My, my older brother's just real bad on drugs. He doesn't know what's reality and what's not anymore. Wow. How often do you see him out here in the streets? Right now he just got locked up, so he's going to be doing a little bit of time, probably like six to eight months. And then when I'm out here, I see him probably at least once a week, twice a week. I try to make that extra effort to go see what he's doing, see his places, make sure he's doing all right. Hey bro, what message do you have for the youth about homelessness, uh, about drugs, all that? Uh, that you're not alone. Like, I always thought that I was the only the weird kid because my parents were always older, or I'd have a different set of parents every school year, and I know I I thought that was normal until I realized it wasn't, and then that's when I started acting out and fighting and all that. But just realizing that you're not alone and that like. People are in this world to help others. We're not all here to hate each other. For sure. Bro. You got to do what you got to do, but you just should love people more than you should hate them. What message do you have for the foster care child that's currently maybe going through a certain type of struggle? Beat the statistic. Like, what uh, is the statistic, by statistics the way? Statistics is over 80% of us all end up homeless, addicted to drugs, or incarcerated for the rest of our life. And that's, that's just... Beat the statistic, man. It's all a mindset. Like, yeah, we get dealt city situations, and you get dealt very bad homes sometimes, but at the end of the day, once you're a grown-ass adult, you make your own decisions, and you can't blame anyone else but yourself. For sure, bro. Um, what plans do you have, bro, uh, to go to detox, methadone, anything like that? Um, no, I don't. not methadone or that any of that, but right now I'm signing up for a course to get my, uh, what's it called? my CDO oh, okay. and then I'm, I'm if that goes well then I'm gonna sign up for treatment and go there but so far I've been able to take months month breaks and like stop on my own it's just once you stop and you don't see any results then you just return back to what you know and it's hard being clean and homeless at the same time for sure bro. like that yeah it's a product of your environment but you can beat a statistic it's all I mean it all comes down to your choices um what message do you have for friends if they see this video? Reach know? out. Reach out to me. You all, know, all my friends know my story. All my friends know that I'm always going to be there for them. So just reach out. Hey, bro. Um, you mentioned before the interview that you went to jail for a little bit. What would you yeah. go to jail for? Uh, I caught a robbery charge. and I went to jail. Then I got out on December 20th. And then not even a month later got stabbed up for the second time. Yeah. Um, what kinds of things do you usually do to make money out here besides selling fentanyl and that? Um, I, I went to school for mechanics. I work on cars a little bit here and there. I got a whole education. I got a, my high school diploma. 
I went ASE certification, and I just, it's just your choices, man. I just, it's like a, the lifestyle is more addicting than the drugs. For sure. Like, like, you almost crave being out here more than you do craving the drugs. Wow. Um, would you be okay with me doing a follow-up interview in the future? Yeah, I'd be yeah. down with that. I really appreciate it, bro. And just so most people understand, um, there is a percentage of people that ask me for, for cash, but there, there's a majority that asked me for, for food. And then this individual was kind enough to, he didn't even want anything. He just wanted his story to be put out there to, to hopefully inspire the youth, you know, and, and to help out. And for that, bro, I'm, I'm really grateful, you know. Uh, like yeah, I man. said, if you need anything, like, but you didn't, you didn't want anything. But if you do need something. Uh, I'm, I'm golden. I, I make sure I always got what I need. I just would rather help them if I can just help one kid. I got then that'd be cool, you know. Thank but, you, bro. That that means a lot because that's all. That's the goal, you know what I mean, bro. Yeah. Like, trying to bring awareness and uh, to the yeah, youth, that bro. You know, happens we, quick. For sure, because the youth, like right now with fentanyl, they're just getting sucked in, bro. Yeah, 14, 13, 12 years old. Yeah. Starting on yeah, it's crazy. Done. It's not worth it. For sure, it's bro. It's not worth Thank it. Thank you for your time, bro. Yeah.